Hello, it's Professor Gilmet again, and uh, today what we want to do is talk about working with a sampling distribution. Um, it's a really important idea, and so I just I wanted to do a video to help students with it. So unfortunately, in June 2016, when I'm recording this video, a lowland gorilla named Harambi uh, was killed after a three-year-old boy fell into Harambi's enclosure. Uh, it was uh, went pretty viral. A lot of people had a lot of things to say about it but Harambi was 17 years old at the time and so one may wonder how long he might have lived if the incident had not occurred and so we actually have some data from Weiss, Gartner, Gold, and Stonsky and if I misspelled your name I'm sorry but I did link to your research. Uh, their research indicates that lowland gorillas in captivity have a mean life expectancy of about 31.7 years or 32 years and a standard deviation, it's pretty significant, 11.7 um, years. Uh, the ages at deaths were normally distributed and basically looked like um, this, right? So you've got 32 in the middle, the most frequent value. Um, they did actually have a gorilla that was uh, right before three years old that passed away, so that would be this end of the spectrum. And then of course, um, Harambi was at the Cincinnati Zoo and the zookeeper there said that um, he could have lived into his 40s. And so you can see that a, a significant um, portion of the graph is in the 40s, all right? Um, so as you can see that while some gorillas may live into their 50s, some were reported to die as early as three years old, okay? So what percentage of gorillas die by 17 years old? Well, we can actually use our normal probability calculator um, <clears throat> to determine that by entering less than 17, right? So these would be all gorillas less than 17 years old. So let's switch over to StatCrunch, right? And I wanna show you what that looks like. So if you click on Stat, and you go down to Calculator, and then you go over to Normal, and you click on it, what you'll get is this very nice normal curve right here um, that, you can, that you can modify, all right? And so what we want to do is um, the standard normal model has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one, but uh, lowland gorillas uh, in zoos lit, have a mean of 31.7 um, and they have a standard deviation of 11.7 years. And so what we want to look at is the probability, that's that capital P right there, of observed values, that's the X, being less than, and, and there is a drop down there, but we do want it to be less than, 17 years old. And so by filling in these three boxes and leaving this one open, when I click compute, what you'll actually see is the probability here. If I hover over it, it'll actually say probability of less than 17. And they've got it shaded in, right? So you can see the shading right here. So um, you can see it's a little more than one standard deviation away. So not terribly unlikely. So let's go back to the Word document. And so there it is. And so any one gorilla has a 10.4% chance of dying by 17 years old. Um, not a lot, but, but not a tiny bit, you know, basically one in 10. Uh, Harambi also had a similar chance to live past 50 years old, right? So if you actually look symmetrically, you're at about 50 over here at just past one. Um, so it's really hard to tell from just one gorilla because <clears throat> when you have a sample size of one when you if you've listened to my other videos when you have anecdotal evidence of, of one story uh, you get a lot of variability a lot of stuff can potentially happen right good stuff bad stuff all kinds of stuff right so what happens when we have a lot of gorillas right um, what if I take a random sample of five gorillas and record the ages at which each one dies well, what happens there, okay? Well, if you have one die young, right, it does affect the mean, but only a bit if the others live to be in their 30s, right? So think about it. If you add 17, right, to 32, which is an average age, to another 32-year-old gorilla, another 32, four average age gorillas, you get 145, and when you divide that by five, you get a mean of 29. Well, 29 is pretty close to 32, right? This is pretty close to what we expect. And this is actually what the central limit theorem is trying to tell us and what we see in sampling distributions. 
So a sample will vary a lot less because the low values and the high values will be balanced out by the average values. And so how much do they vary? Well, it depends on the standard deviation and the sample size. And I hope that makes sense, right? The standard deviation is the amount of variability you already see in the population. And then the sample size is going to reduce that variability as it goes up. So you can see here the standard deviation for sample means is going to be equal to this square root where you have the um, standard deviation in the numerator. As it gets bigger, the standard deviation is going to get bigger. And the sample size in the bottom, as it gets bigger, this, the variability is going to get smaller. So now please note, I present the formula like this because it matches a pattern of other formulas, okay? Um, and the study of patterns is really what mathematics is about for sampling distributions, not because it is the simplest form. You will not see this printed in a book, but I think it should be. I'm gonna make a pedagogical argument for this, not a mathematical argument. All right, so uh, what does our sampling distribution look like if we have five to gorillas? Well, the mean is still uh, 3.17, but the standard deviation of the sampling distribution ends up being 5.2 when you do the calculation, all right, by plugging in the uh, standard deviation and the sample size. So we see about half the variability. Now, what is the likelihood that the average age of the five gorillas is actually less than 17 years old? Well, the idea here is um, you would actually put that standard deviation in and it becomes a much smaller percentage. So let's go back uh, to StatCrunch, right? And let's go ahead and put in the 5.4, right? It was uh, 5.2, sorry. It's going to put 5.2 in. Um, and now when we compute, what you'll see is there's your 31.7 right in the center. Uh, but 17 is now way at this left-hand side. And the probability has gotten much smaller, right? For all five gorillas to die so that the average age of all five of them was less than 17 is a tiny percentage. And so when we look at it, it's we see that it's only about a quarter of a percent of the time would we see a sample of five gorillas have a mean age of less than 17 years old. Um, but what if we sampled 24 gorillas? I mean, five gorillas isn't that much. What about 24 gorillas? What if we took a, um, a stratified sample of one gorilla at each of the major zoos and we ended up with 24 gorillas? What we'd see is even less variability. Uh, in fact, we should probably never see a sample of 24 gorillas have a mean age of less than 17 years old. Well, why? Well, because if the mean is supposed to be 31.7, the standard deviation of this sample proportion is gonna be 2.4, right? 2.4 is pretty small. And so what would happen is, let me switch over to um, StatCrunch, if I put the um, 2.4 in here and I click compute what you can see is there's 31 29 26 three standard deviations is 24 and a half years old for the average age so 17 is way further away um, in fact if we wanted to calculate it um, we could compute the expression and we could say well if it's 17 and 31.7 is what we would expect. If I divide that by the 2.4 years, then what I would get is um, a little over six standard deviations away, which is one in uh, one sample in two and a half billion samples. That's how rare that would be. All right. So I hope you. I hope this helps you. <laughs> I can talk today. Understand sampling distributions and how sample size influences variability. Um, I say in my classes and videos all the time, sample size is king. And here, hopefully, clearly, you can see why. And that makes us happy. So until next time.